In this video, we're gonna break down and dispel any rumors, get some clarity. What does the research actually say? What type of water should you be drinking? We're gonna get clarity on it. RO, alkaline, bottled water, distilled water. What's the best type? What are the factors? There's a lot of factors. It's all gonna go down right here. By the end of this video, you're gonna understand what type of water to be putting into your body or at least be able to make an improvement. So I'm gonna take a good, better, best approach or bad, better, best approach. <laughs> for some of these. So let's dive right into it and see what the research says. There are three main factors when it comes to choosing your water. So anytime you see a video or a teaching on just one part of these, you might be missing the other factors. The three factors are purity, the pH, and the power of water. Can't wait to walk you through that one. Let's go to purity first. Seems to be the number one thing to remove the chemicals, the toxicity. What's found in our environment today? You really can't find clean water, especially out of the tap. It just doesn't really happen that way. So the Environmental Protection Agency has been throwing out resources for you to be able to check your tap water to know what's actually in, I'm looking across my city out the window right now, what's actually in the water that the city provides. You can actually go to your city's website and look up the testing that they do for their water purity. You can also go to a link I put down below for you to check out your city's tap water and the kind of contaminants you're going to find. Chlorine, fluoride, chemicals, fertilizers, pesticides, medications that oftentimes aren't tested for, and other toxins are showing up and it's difficult to filter some of these out, but it is a must in today's world. You are 70% water. We've gotta be getting clean, pure water into your body in order to build up. So where do you start? I think everyone can begin with some level of purification. I'm gonna break down the different levels for you. So from a purity perspective, step number one, get yourself some kind of filter, whether it's a filter on your water bottle, a filter on your fridge, a filter on your sink, uh, a pitcher filter. I think a great starting spot is just at least get that into your life. The fridge filter is very common nowadays. That is one I would at least advise you're gonna be removing some of the chlorines, probably not a lot of the fluoride, definitely the microbes, some of the heavy metals that are involved in the water as it's coming through. So at least start yourself off with the filter, that would be good. Going one step further, bottle. Now I'm gonna go a little bit deeper into this throughout and I've definitely put some research below. Um, bottled water can have its advantages. It is, however, hard on the environment. It does come with a lot of microplastics floating around to it, into it, you. And is it actually what it says it is? Well, I took a deep dive into the research to try to make sense of that for you. So not all bottled water is the same and to the same level. Opting for bottled water is generally a good option, but take caution as microplastics are found in 93% of bottles. So if it comes in a plastic bottle, chances are the plastic is leaching as it gets heated in transportation, microplastics into the bottle. So there was a large study with almost 500 different water bottle brands purchased at different locations. 93% of them kicked off a high level of these microplastics, the little chemicals that are in the water that get into your body, then your liver and your gut have to figure out what the heck am I gonna do with these? Now the second layer of what also occurs is phthalates. I read about this in the Living a Daily book because phthalates mimic hormones inside of your body. Men, women, we don't want a lot of this going on because it messes with your estrogen levels, creates it higher in men, which causes gain of weight and fat on the body. It increases stress levels and overall mimicking your hormones inside your system, bad combination for long-term health, especially when it comes to cancers. So there ends up being a lot of phthalates leached from the plastic. So I put the study below as a reference, 93% of bottled water. Uh, that way I'm gonna get into which ones are gonna be the best here in just a moment as we analyze. One, the purity of the bottled water has to be taken into consideration. Not all of them are actually doing what they say they're doing when it comes to purity. So purity has gotta be number one option. And then we're gonna get into the other two in just a moment for bottled water. But let me speak to the other filtrations. Before we do that, there is not one criteria to judge water by. We gotta judge it by all three. But when it comes to your own filter, if you are choosing bottle, we gotta watch out for the microplastics. We gotta watch out for the phthalates. So getting it in a glass bottle is gonna be even better to avoid a lot of those things. Next up to get the impurities out of your water, RO. Very popular uh, system that's come about in the last several years. Reverse 
osmosis. Did you ever do this back in like sixth grade, seventh grade? I remember playing with little tubes of water and we put one tube inside of another tube and one had color in it. The other one didn't have coloring in it. And we would watch the coloring move across osmotically to the fluid that has less particles in it and could take on those particles. Well, that's essentially what's happening is when you look at the particles of water, if you put that permeable plastic barrier right here, then what's gonna happen is you are osmotically, the particles are gonna move over to the less concentrated side, hence more particles in this water on the right compared to the left. Reverse osmosis forces that to go the opposite direction. So they use plunging and go and push all the water and the particles back this direction, which then in turn raises the water level and the amount of purified water because the membrane is collecting heavy metals, microbes, the toxins that are in the water. However, it raises the water level, but all the good minerals, all the good particles remain behind. So RO in essence is deadened water Hence, point number three, I'm gonna talk about the power of water, that it becomes very important to make sure you still have the minerals inside of the water, RO removes those. So I used this for many years. I started to have water absorption issues inside of my body. I was missing the minerals. We'll talk more about it in a second. So for that reason, I would recommend surface area filtration. Surface area filtration would be the best way to filter your water because you are using a surface that detoxes and pulls chemicals, toxins, uh, heavy metals and microbes out of the system. This is usually a charcoal layer, which is why I put it in black. The water, we wanna pass over that layer as much as possible. So it is a large tank that the water goes up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. It's like a big maze the water goes through. All the while, you're just trying to get the water to touch more of the natural detoxifier for the water, like charcoal, to pull that out. And that's exactly what it's doing. The advantage, minerals found in water, magnesium, chloride, zinc, calcium, are not toxic, so they don't get pulled out. So this preserves the mineral content, which keeps the power of water in play and gets the toxins out. So I actually installed one of these into my house. Uh, they can be gotten in a, uh, a countertop version, but you can also get a whole house filtration system. So I wanted a whole house filtration system. We wanted it in our shower because you get a lot of toxicity from the water that hits your skin. You absorb 25% of the water that hits your skin. So we wanna make sure that all water in our house was filtered. So I put it to the test. I used the site that I put below for you for the environmental working group. And I went to my city's tap water database, looked at the tests and found out how much heavy metals and chemicals and pesticides were in our water. I installed the surface area filtration unit. I then retested and paid for a test myself. You don't advise you doing this. It cost me several hundred dollars. And I found that all levels of those toxins lowered and got within normal ranges that I was more comfortable with, way more than what the city was more was comfortable with. It took out fluoride, which is very hard to do. It took out chlorine. Both of those are linked to cancers long-term. Now my children have really clean water. They could even drink out of the toilet if they wanted to. But uh, information on that below if you need more on like water filtration systems and making sense of it. But there is your good, better, best version when it comes to purity of water. Let's move on to the second P, P, H. This is what you see a lot of people, I've done these videos before, a lot of them on YouTube, of, look, we tested water, which one's the best? Well, it's the best from a pH perspective, but it doesn't necessarily make it best when it comes to purity or power. However, pH is important for several reasons. Now, understanding pH, zero, this is my little rainbow pH chart, okay? Red is traditionally on the pH chart. The lowest, that would be zero, no alkalinity at all, that is completely acidic, that would kill you. Okay, so really, really acidic over here. Purple and darker is typically all the way on the other end alkaline, which would also kill you. So as an organism, you are right in the middle, okay? And when you're in the middle, you are green, you are good to go, you're around seven, that's what your body operates at. When you're in that state, uh, research shows cancer can't survive in an oxygenated environment, which means a higher pH environment. It likes acidity. 
which means we want to get our body slightly alkaline. Tipping the scales just a little bit this way. Not a 14, not a 10, but maybe between a 7 and an 8. That's what we're looking for. So if you put foods in that are more acidic, you're asking for more disease forming in the reds and the oranges. If you put in foods that are more alkaline, you're going to be more in the clear fighting inflammation, fighting oxidation of cholesterol inside your system, cancer causing cells forming. So I want to think about what we're eating and what we are drinking. Well, water is a huge part of this. It can take you more acidic or it can take you more alkaline. So we did a video, you can check that out below, on actually testing water pH of several popular brands of bottled water. So then you can now start to understand which brand is going to be better when it comes to the pH if I buy a bottle of water. We also tested common uh, foods, uh, uh, drinks that you have, orange juice and milk, and where does it stand on the scale so that you can start putting more alkaline liquids in. You can check both of those resources out below. Now, what we found, uh, and I did a little rating system here. I'm not going to go through every single individual brand of bottled water you can think of. However, here's your criteria, good, better, best. When it comes to store brands, just Kroger making their own, uh, Whole Foods making their own, name your local grocery store. They have probably have their own bottled water. Those tend to score the worst, hence why they're also the cheapest. So store brands down to four or five acidity. So acidic, making your body cause more disease, more inflammation. Then as we moved up, there was the popular brands. These were mineral added brands, Dasanye, Aquafina. They're still scoring around a five or a six traditionally, okay? These are deadened waters. Minerals have to be added back in. So I think they just used, you know, reverse osmosis. So they used some kind of filtration, got some of the chemicals out a little bit. However, they forgot to add the minerals back in. So these companies like Pepsi and Coke add minerals back in, but it's still acidic. So the purity is questionable here, okay, for bottled waters and they added synthetic minerals back in and we're on the acidic scale. So not loving those. Next, we go to distilled. Now, some people use distilled. Some people drink it consistently. However, there is some studies that if you're constantly putting distilled water in, there are no minerals in distilled water. You are literally boiling water. You leave contaminants behind. You collect the steam and then you drink the steam once it condenses. That will leave all the contaminants behind, but it also leaves behind a lot of the minerals. So it is completely dead in water. It's nice for laboratory use or if you want completely clear. You can occasionally use this for detoxification. I'm okay with that. It will aid in some detoxification or maybe you have um, you know, something on your skin. You want to put some of the distilled water on there, but those are sort of the only uses that I would recommend it for just during a detoxification protocol. Okay. So we're not constantly drinking that. However, it does come in about seven, but distilled water, when it's exposed to air, it collects carbon dioxide from the air. Isn't that incredible? What it does though is carbon dioxide will make it go down a little bit. It's not going to harm you, but it does make it go a little bit more acidic. So that starts showing up around the six. So it's not truly even. So what is the better option? Spring water. Spring water is tested out from a purity standpoint at the highest level. Think Fiji. Fiji was off the chart. Very good. They put a lot of focus on doing that. I'm not promoting any type of water, but that was true. Um, in a lot of the spring waters, uh, Avion was another really good one that was good with uh, the purity. And they also, it was moving and it was good alkalinity. However, some of the microplastics showed up in the Avion bottle. So it didn't score too well there. So the Fiji's better uh, Voss or spring water in a glass bottle is gonna be absolute best because then you avoid those microorganisms, uh, microplastics altogether. So spring water would be the top choice. It does come in at a seven or eight typically. Uh, so you're gonna see that higher alkalinity. You're going to see it filtered properly. Uh, all the way up in at the bottom, the highest scoring pH is going to be specifically alkaline water. This is water that's been altered to have a higher pH. So it will score a higher pH, but does it necessarily, and is it necessarily the best water for your body? Well, we got to go to point number three to answer that question. There's a lot of people that will tout alkaline water. They will want you to buy the machine that gives them alkaline water. They will want you to buy their bottled water because it's high alkaline water. This alone is not the main thing that I'm looking at when it comes to um, purchasing water, especially when it's bottled. We got to look at factor number three. So let's go to the power of water. All right. Now, water has power. It is living. It's moving. It's got a structure to it. H2O, right? It's like the foundation of of life on this planet, H2O, right? So there is high energy water and there is low energy water. 
Uh, and so there are things that add life to water and allow water to be its best. And there are things that decrease the energy of water. If you put in deadened water, you're asking for less energy and more problems. So let's look at that first, all right? Things that decrease the energy of water, the power of water. Number one, lowering the pH. If we go down the acidity scale, right? Store brands that are just running it through filtration and not caring about purity, and you just decrease the pH, you are decreasing the energy and the power of how the body, body is going to use the water, how it's gonna be living, and how it's gonna support your living body. So pH lowering decreases energy. Removing the minerals. Distilling removes the minerals, right? That's number three here. We looked at some of these, reverse osmosis removes the minerals. So you are deadening the water. You're gaining purification. You're doing okay with alkalinity, but you're removing the power. All right, I'm gonna sum all this up in a second. So removing the minerals, distilling it, that's gonna remove those, lower the energy. What is that gonna lead to for you? It show, studies show that it dries the eyes out. That's a warning sign of too low of minerals. Sinuses being dried out or your skin being dried out. And so you're not properly absorbing and using the water because it's dead in the water because you don't have the minerals in it or the water itself has been so altered it has been dented going into your body. So what do we do? Let's look over at how do we increase the power of water. If we're gonna drink it, let's get the most out of it, all right? Number one, we talked about you can just increase the pH of water. You can use machines to do this, right? Hence, alkaline water. So it's like, oh, well that, yeah, adds more energy to it. It increases the pH as long as it purified. We're doing pretty good, right, Dr. Living Good? Well, here's the issue. Iodized water is passing the water across basically an electrical current. And when you pass it across an electrical current, it shakes, rattles, busts up the H2O molecules, right? H2O. So we have our, our O and our two H's. There's the foundation of everything about water. What happens when you pass the electricity and iodize it, you're literally breaking one of those off. This becomes a negatively charged H ion. Now, this is going to alter your pH and raise it. However, you now have unstable ions floating around inside of your body. So that water is gonna be a lot higher in these ions that are negatively charged. It's gonna raise the pH, but is that a good thing for your system? You basically tricked the water, you busted up the structure of the water, you end up actually deadening it if you use a machine to raise the pH. You wanna naturally raise it. So if you use a machine, what happens is you're constantly putting in pH of 10, pH of 9, pH of, Dr. Ludwig, I drink pH 10 water every single day. Well, you absolutely do not want to do that one hour before or one hour after eating because that water going into your stomach is going to raise the pH of your stomach. Well, your stomach's going to be a pH of around 3. But if you constantly pour in pH of 10, you are counteracting the juices and the pH the stomach is going to need to break down the meal that you just ate or are about to eat. So for this reason, for detoxification, maybe have higher alkaline water just like distilled, but I do not love this long term because it goes against balancing the whole energy, the whole pH of the entire body. So just iodizing it, I did that one in red, I would prefer if you stay away from a machine that iodizes your water and your pH. We wanna look for more natural sources. How can we raise the pH naturally? Minerals. Adding in minerals is an easy way to be able to increase the pH, to bring the water and the energy of it higher. It's gonna help the alkalinity of it. And your body needs these things to avoid dry eyes, sinuses, dry skin, fatigue. So adding minerals back into the water, magnesium, zinc, potassium, calcium, chloride, these are all the uh, electrolytes that your body needs. So I was drinking lots of RO water that does not have the minerals. It was pure. The pH of it was low because it was missing all of its minerals. And what I ended up with is a lot of water going in. It was like chugging and the rains just flooding my body every day, but the soil wasn't absorbing any of it. It was just running off. So to fix this, I had to start adding minerals and or greens powder to my water to help drive it into the cells. And by driving into the cells, it was not how much I drank. It was how much I absorbed and I had microscopic blood work done what plumped my cells back up. It wasn't stuck in my lymph system or in my bloodstream or just being passed through. And it energized my body. 
It gave my cells more power. It balanced my pH. And I had the incredibly essential minerals and greens that my heart needed to function, that my kidneys needed to function, all my vital organs. So minerals and greens. The one that I used to accomplish just that is posted below, the minerals and the greens that I use. Number three, adding motion to your water adds energy. Would you rather drink water out of a stagnant pond or a running river <laughs> or spring? The spring, right? The pond water is going to be all gooey and dirty and just sitting there. The spring water is going to stay refreshed. So not only is it more pure, but it is also more structured. In the proper structure that it is supposed to be, the structure of water matters. This is where it gets its energy from, the closest it can be to that structure. So it's not damaged at all. Adding motion to it helps it. So there are centrifuges and structural water machines out there, but you can simply add some swirling to your water. That's a motion. You can focus on drinking spring water. That's why I like it for purity and for pH and for motion because it comes from that motion source, which is going to have more power to it. So would you rather drink spring water? Would you rather drink pond water? We'll take the spring. So to sum this up, how do we get the best water? I think you need to choose a filtration system. Okay. Just start with a filter. If you're going to go bottled, stick with spring water. Stick with the higher end spring waters. And if you can get it in a glass bottle, even better. RO is gonna remove a lot of purities, but do not forget to add minerals to your water is an absolute must. If you are using RO, your best case is gonna be surface area filtration, which is listed below. From a pH perspective, spring is still gonna be the winner there. It is not too high, but it still gives us that alkaline effect. We want to avoid things that negate the energy from the water. Removing the minerals, no good. Distilling the water, no good. So we want to be able to provide our body with these minerals. So add minerals to the water. There are your three Ps to get the number one nutrient inside of your body. 70% of it is water. To learn more on these topics, check out the next video that I put here for you to understand the pH of different waters and the pH of different drinks that you are drinking so you can continue to follow this same concept of is it toxic for me how's the ph of it and is it going to add energy and life to my body everything you drink can follow these criteria so check out that video next